Number 7. Kidnapping the Pope After decades of unsubstantiated rumors, the Vatican has finally revealed one of the weirdest plots ever put into motion by Adolf Hitler. According to the Vatican newspaper L'Osservatore Romano, Hitler tried to kidnap Pope Pius XII during World War II. His plan involved an elite commando squad with the SS to kidnap the Pope at the Vatican. The squad would then stash the Pope in a tower like a fairy tale princess. The tower chosen to stash the Pope in is called the Tower of the Winds. It's above the Vatican Library, meaning the commandos wouldn't have needed to take the Pope very far. The plan was to hide him for three or four days until a larger squad could arrive in Rome to occupy the Vatican. According to what General Karl Wolf said in the 1970s, Hitler personally came to him with the mission. Wolf was the supreme commander for the Italian branch of the SS following the defeat of Mussolini. He said Hitler came to him in 1944 with a plot to secure Vatican City along with all its treasures. Hitler wanted to raid the Vatican secret archive and take as much loot as he could back to Germany. He also wanted the Pope and the top members of the church taken north. Hitler needed the pontiff away from the Allies, who he feared would influence him. Hitler supposedly called the Vatican a nest of spies and socialist propaganda. Even with Italy under the control of the Nazis, they never did go through with the plan to steal the Pope. Many believe Pope Pius XII was a Nazi sympathizer, and that was the only reason he was spared. Some historians have called him Hitler's Pope because throughout World War II, the leader of the Roman Catholic Church never spoke out about the Holocaust. Rumor is, the Pope knew exactly what Hitler was doing in the concentration camps, but kept his mouth shut. The Pope was scared of the Nazi leader. On the other side of the argument, supporters of the Church say the Pope was only doing what he had to in order to stop ruthless persecution of Christians. The one thing that isn't so easily reconciled is what happened after the war. Even once the threat of Hitler was gone, the Vatican continued to support the Nazis. War criminals were given safe passage out of Europe using special Vatican passports. Men such as Franz Stangl, who commanded two extermination camps responsible for the genocide of nearly a million people. Franz slipped away with help from the church. So did Adolf Eichmann, the organizer of the Holocaust. Number 6. Covering up aliens Benito Mussolini supposedly helped cover up a crashed UFO in northern Italy just before World War II broke out. Aerospace engineer and UFO enthusiast Roberto Pinotti said he obtained documents proving the Italian dictator was aware of an alien object. Roberto told Mail Online that he and his colleague Alfredo Lissoni started an investigation into the rumor of a UFO crash in 1933 in Lombardy. They've been investigating the alleged crash since 1996. Most recently, the pair received the original secret documents about the case. They haven't opened up the case files for the public to see, but they did publish a detailed report that anyone has access to. The original documents were written in the 1930s. They detail how Benito Mussolini was so flabbergasted by the alien ship that he started a secret department to study extraterrestrial activity. Then the war started, and things got complicated. In April 1945, Benito Mussolini was executed. After the war, the American forces supposedly captured the UFO from the Italians. Then they shipped it to the US, where the trail goes cold. What's really interesting about this new information is that it matches what former US intelligence officer David Grush recently claimed. David said that the first flying saucer ever recovered by the US came from Italy. David also claimed the US has multiple flying saucers, which they've gathered from various sources. David's information seems to corroborate with the old rumors about Mussolini and the aliens. The Italian dictator may have been the first world leader to cover up a crashed UFO. Number 5. Seeing the Future Before Adolf Hitler was made the Chancellor of Germany on January 30, 1933, his rise to the top was not necessarily inevitable. The results of the Reichstag elections in 1932 were not good for the Nazis. The National Socialist Party suffered big losses in Parliament, making it look like Hitler could lose the campaign. Hitler was out of money, and people were defecting from his movement. Nazis all over Germany doubted whether Adolf Hitler had the guts to lead the nation as the Führer. Fearing the worst, Hitler was desperate to know what the future held in store for him. 
His belief in the occult was so strong that he sought a clairvoyant who could give him a glimpse at things to come. Hitler summoned the most famous clairvoyant in Germany to the Hotel Kaiserhof in Berlin. His name was Erich Jan Hannesen, and he was Jewish. Erich Hannesen was a cultural phenomenon in Europe during the 1930s. He was born in Vienna and made a name for himself in the world of psychics. He predicted the future and came up with horoscopes. Before there were any rock stars in the world, Erich Hannesen was the industrial age Chris Angel. He had made a very lucrative business out of satisfying the German hunger for paranormal phenomena. Hitler was already drawn to the clairvoyant for one very simple reason. In March 1932, the psychic had made a prediction in his weekly newspaper. The prediction said that within one year, Hitler would become the Führer. Many people in Berlin laughed it off, but Hitler thought it was a real prophecy. At the Hotel Kaiserhof in the days before Hitler would be elected, the two men had a meeting. Hitler was made to sit in the middle of the hotel room while the clairvoyant examined his hands. He also counted the bumps on his head and fell back into a mystical trance. Then, Hannesen blurted out the words, I see victory for you, it cannot be stopped. By the end of the month, Hitler was the supreme leader of Germany. Erich Hannesen was nicknamed the Prophet of the Third Reich. The Jewish clairvoyant may have been indirectly responsible for Hitler's rise to power. If the clairvoyant had said anything other than Adolf Hitler was going to win, Hitler himself may have fallen into despair. If Hitler had left that hotel room depressed, he may not have had the gumption to take over the government. History may have been very different. But as it was, Hitler left the hotel room feeling like he was about to take over the world. Hannesen's end came very quickly. Even though he had ties to the Nazis, he was one of the first Jews to be executed. Early in the morning on March 25, 1933, the prophet of the Third Reich was arrested. Maybe it was because Hitler didn't want him spilling the beans about their mystical meeting. Whatever the case, his body was dumped in a field outside Berlin. Have you ever had your fortune told? Number 4. Fighting Jack and His Longbow Jack Churchill, aka Fighting Jack and sometimes Mad Jack, was one of the most bizarre men of World War II. He led from the front with such bravery and courage that many of his men made it successfully through the bloodshed of the war. The weirdest thing about Fighting Jack Churchill was that he went into battle with a sword and a longbow. Jack was born in 1906 in England. He studied at the Dragon School, Oxford, on the Isle of Man. In 1926, he joined the 2nd Battalion of the Manchester Regiment. Before the war started, Jack had an adventurous career. He drove a motorcycle 1,500 miles across India. He traveled the railways of Burma and learned to play the bagpipes. He briefly became an actor, showing off his archery skills in the 1924 film The Thief of Baghdad. He also participated in the World Archery Championships in 1939. When the war started, Jack's regiment was part of the expeditionary force to France. Rather than walking around with a heavy machine gun, Jack led his men with his longbow. He and his company became trapped following the Battle of Lepinette. When the Nazis came for them, Jack put an arrow through the first one. Then he picked up machine guns until he ran out of ammunition and went back to the bow. He got the rest of his company out of a prickly situation using bullets and arrows. During another incident, Jack supposedly captured 42 German troops and an entire mortar crew using nothing but his trusty sword. Jack fought his way through the war and lived until 1996. Number 3. The Secret Escape Sub A submarine that had been missing for almost 80 years was recently found at the bottom of the sea. Researchers with the Sea War Museum Jutland in Denmark were working on a project to map wreckages in the North Sea when they came across U-3523. It was one of Hitler's favorite Type 21 submarines. These submersible vessels had the capability to travel from Europe to South America without stopping. They went like a fire torpedo, being shot across the entirety of the Atlantic Ocean. This particular U-boat met its end on May 6, 1945. A British B-24 Liberator bomber sank the submarine on the same day that Allied forces liberated Denmark. It's believed all 58 members of the submarine crew died as their vessel was destroyed. Now the submarine has been found 10 nautical miles from the Danish city of Skagen, sitting at a depth of about 403 feet. Most of the submarine is buried in sand, with the rest sticking up at an angle. 
After the Nazi regime was torn asunder, there were a lot of rumors about Nazi officers fleeing. Germany knew the war was coming to an end. Even in the days before Allied victory was inevitable, the high-ranking Germans knew what was coming. Those who could tried to escape in U-boats with stolen treasures. Rumor persists to this day that Hitler never died. He escaped on a U-boat and lived out his days in South America. U-3523 may have been full of Nazis trying to flee Germany. Gert Andersen from the museum in Denmark said rumor is that the submarine was filled with valuables stolen during the war. The vessel looked like it was fleeing Germany in the direction of South America when it was destroyed. Researchers will likely never know who was on the submarine when it sank to the bottom of the ocean, just like nobody will ever know if Hitler ever truly escaped to South America or if he died in his bunker with Eva Braun. That being said, some declassified documents from the CIA have recently shed light on the subject. The documents claim Hitler did escape to South America, but the documents are controversial, with no way to prove the claims one way or another. The declassified file says that in October 1955, details slipped from a former SS man named Philip Citroen. He claimed Hitler reached Colombia, then fled to Argentina. The former SS soldier even had a photograph taken in 1954 in Colombia, showing a man who was supposedly Hitler. Number 2. The Horror of Buchenwald Karl Otto Koch was the first commandant of the Buchenwald concentration camp in 1937. He ran the camp until 1941, alongside his wife Ilse Koch. She became known as the Witch of Buchenwald for the atrocious way she treated the prisoners. But her husband was even worse. Karl was such an evil man that he ended up being imprisoned at Buchenwald alongside the Jewish prisoners. Karl Koch, a camp leader during the Holocaust, was too vile even for the other Nazis. Two officials accused Karl of encouraging murder. He was also accused of corruption and embezzlement. Karl was using the camp workers to complete his own personal projects. One of his projects was to build a zoo with a bear pit. Buchenwald as a camp was particularly horrifying. The commandant set up a punishment block near the entrance known only as the bunker. This was where prisoners who violated even the smallest regulation would be tortured, often to death. The commandant also established a brothel at the camp, which was definitely not Nazi regulation. Buchenwald was notoriously unusual. They kept Jehovah's Witnesses as prisoners. It was also one of the only camps that held Germans who refused to gain honest employment. These people were called a social, deemed unworthy of German society. In 1941, after Karl Koch was relieved of duty, medical experiments began at the camp. Scientists used experimental vaccines on prisoners to try and treat things like typhus and cholera. In 1944, Danish physician Dr. Karl Wernert began to experiment with a cure for homosexuality. The cure was a failure, and the doctor soon found himself losing face with the Nazis. On April 5, 1945, Karl Koch was executed by a firing squad. One week later, American soldiers arrived to liberate Buchenwald. His wife, the witch of Buchenwald, was sentenced to life in prison. She took her own life in jail in 1967. It's still unclear why Karl wanted the zoo and the bear pit. Some believe he may have thrown prisoners in the pit just for fun. Number 1. Gremlins of War During World War II, British pilots suffered a scourge of mischievous creatures that messed with the mechanical parts of their aircraft. They called these creatures gremlins, described as gnome-like with a penchant for mayhem. Gremlins most likely aren't real, but they were used as scapegoats throughout the war. Whenever something technical went wrong with an aircraft, it was blamed on a poorly behaved gremlin. Nobody knows who came up with the term gremlin first. The legend is that in 1939, a group of bombers with the Royal Air Force blamed a technical malfunction on a mischievous fairy. The word gremlin comes from the Old English word gremion, which means to vex. The first fighter pilots who blamed malfunction on these creatures described them as being tiny humans with elf ears and ugly yellow eyes. They were said to wear overalls and carry around tools to mess with machines. Prior to World War II, gremlins didn't exist. It was the British pilots who came up with the term, which became part of popular culture. Gremlins went from tiny humans with mechanical knowledge to the monstrous beasts you see in fantasy movies. This was also thanks to Roald Dahl, who came out with a book called The Gremlins in the 1940s. 
Now the next time you call someone a gremlin, you'll know where the term came from. What do you think was the weirdest thing that happened in World War II? Let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and come back soon for more shocking videos from the channel.